the secret to manifestation. This isn't clickbait and I warn you, this isn't a technique video. It's not about getting it done quickly. It's about fundamentals. However, when you grasp the fundamentals, then this stuff moves quickly. In the past week alone, I've manifested a specific type of person and then a specific person within a day of deciding that I wanted to manifest them. So the secret is entirely dependent on you. I know that sounds like a cop-out answer, but it's very important. Everyone struggles at different points. So I'm going to make some assumptions here and I'm going to share some of the areas where I myself have struggled. So remember when we talked about the three distortions, you could consider them the three laws of our universe, if you like. So there's the law of free will, there's love, which I prefer to call acceptance, and you'll understand why later on in the video, and then there's light, when things manifest into our reality. We can use this as a guide because this is how it works. That is literally the process of manifestation. So firstly, free will, the choice. Remember, we've talked about the choice. We talked about the choice in terms of positive path, negative path, but the choice is every choice we make. You have to know what you want, and then you have to decide to have it. I know that sounds kind of like, yeah, I like, of course, dude, but you would be surprised. Really dig deep down. Think about something that you want and you're trying to manifest, but it's not coming true. Is it something you really want? Is it something you're told to want? Is it something that you want because you believe it will lead to what you actually want? Like money, you know I don't like talking about money, but it's a great example. If you want to buy something expensive, don't manifest money, manifest the end result. And the money will come if that is your path to acquiring it. But you have to be open to other paths. But we'll get to that, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So the choice, you have to know what you want. And it has to be without judgment. Let's talk about anticipation and excitement for a second. I feel as great, as great as anticipation and excitement can feel, I believe that it is not the ideal state for us. I believe excitement is the cross section of fear and hope. Just think about it. Why, why is it exciting? If something's about to, if you're about to get something good or experience something that you want, why is it exciting? I believe that it's exciting because there's the chance that it might not happen. Now compare that to being certain when you're certain that something's going to come to pass. I don't know about you, but I don't feel excited in those times. It's not a negative feeling. I still, it still feels good, but it's not, oh, I'm not hopped up. There's a, there's a quiet, calm knowing. There's a control and a sense of power in that. That's the state we have to achieve. So when you know what you want, you've decided, this is what I want and I'm going to have it. That's like half of the work already done, pretty much. You've basically done it. Sit back, relax, expect it to show up. <laughs> but it can be hard to get to that state and it can often require some shadow work, maybe some coaching, whatever resonates with you, even just like meditation and introspection to figure out what do I actually want? Why do I want the things that I want? And am I ready? Am I committed to having them? So I'm going to assume that you absolutely know what you want and you've 
made the commitment that you will have it. Come hell or high water, no matter what, doesn't matter the, the consequences or the cost, doesn't matter the form it's going to take, you want it and you will have it. Next, we have to accept it. So the, the next distortion, the next law, love. Remember I said I'd prefer to call it acceptance. That's because that's the end result of love. Like I've said in my past videos, A Course in Miracles talks about forgiveness. The Law of One talks about love. What's one word we can use to unify those two ideas? Acceptance. When you love something, when you love someone, you accept them unconditionally. You may not always agree with what they do, <laughs> but you still accept them as they are. You still love them. So you have to love what you're trying to manifest, not trying, what you are manifesting. You have to accept it. And this kind of ties into what we were talking about before with the excitement. If there's the sliver of doubt, then you haven't accepted it yet. It comes with a quiet calm. I was going to say an acceptance. That's that's what we're talking about. <laughs> there's, a, there's a resignation to it. And it's not sexy, right? Because excitement is sexy. So let me give you some, some pointers, some markers, some signs for acceptance. Let's take this specific type of person that I just manifested. I actually didn't go into detail at all. I know a lot of people say, oh, you need to write down every specific detail of the person you want. I'm not saying that's wrong. Clearly it works for people. I'm sure in a certain situation it would work for me too. However, let me give you this perspective. I already know <laughs> the type of person I wanted to manifest here. I don't need to analyze it and and verbalize it specifically as if I'm wishing on a monkey's paw, you know? It's not going to turn around and go, ah, oh, you didn't specify that the turkey sub couldn't have dry turkey, you know? It's it's not gonna do you like that unless that's what you want. Unless you you want a catch and you're expecting the, the, the sting of, of, of disappointment or you get off somehow on something being not quite right. <laughs> I've been there. I get it. So I simply said, I want, boom, that person. And I used a phrase that meant something to me. And I'm not going to share it because it's not important. What's important is that it meant something to me. So find a phrase that means something to you. Let's use the specific example of manifesting a relationship, a, a type of person. Let's say you want to find your soulmate. Let's use that word. Then that's what you'd say. Ask whoever is important to you, your higher self, God, Thor, Odin, Zeus, whoever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whoever is important to you, you can ask for help or even just put the order out to the universe and say, help me find my soulmate or bring me my soulmate. I personally find for me, I like the wording, help me find, because it is me doing it. I'm not externalizing my power and saying, I don't have the power, God do it for me. I am the power, you're the power. Help me find because you're the only one that can do it. Help me find my soulmate. And I'm not sweating the details. Again, maybe maybe you wanna sweat the details, maybe a certain type of people prefer that and that's fine, maybe it works for them. No judgment. But I don't think it's strictly necessary. And sometimes it can be a trap because you're so focused on the nitty gritty little details that you stray into overthinking. 
and suddenly you're, you're out of the, the state of creation, right? The reason this stuff is so difficult is because we're never taught and we don't seem to inherently know how to control our mental states, our emotions. One final point on acceptance. You have to be ready for it. That means if you're manifesting something that comes with any kind of responsibility, you have to be ready for that responsibility. If you want a bigger house, then you have to be prepared and capable of maintaining it. If you want to manifest wealth, money, you have to be capable and willing to not burn it, <laughs> to manage your money well and hold on to it. If you want to manifest a relationship, you have to be ready to be in a relationship. This isn't magic in the usual way that we understand magic in a cartoon childish hollywood sort of way you snap your fingers and ah, everything i want is here <laughs> power comes from you so you have to be ready for it so you know what you want falls to bones and you're gonna have it you're ready for it you've accepted it no matter how it's going to come to you, you're not sweating the details. You are ready and open and waiting for the universe to make its move. The last step, the last distortion is light. So this is a little bit abstract, but if you go back to a couple of my past videos, I talk about how everything we see, our illusion here, that is the universe around us, is made of light. We could think of it like light, illumination, seeing, to see your manifestation come to fruition. So what do you actually do in this step? What can you do? Well, this is when your package arrives and you have to sign for it. This is the part of the process that involves inspired action, if you've ever heard that term. I know there's a little bit of discourse about whether you need to actually take any physical action in the manifestation process. Some people say you do, some people say you don't. I believe you do with an asterisk. You don't have to go out and physically get it, but when it arrives, you have to say yes. I cannot tell you how many times in my life I have actually manifested what I wanted, but when the time came to receive it, I didn't say yes, because I got scared. Maybe because what I had manifested wasn't actually what I wanted, or maybe because it was what I wanted, but I wasn't ready for it. I want you to take a moment and think back to a previous moment in your life where a similar thing may have happened to you. It looked like you were about to get what you want. Maybe you sabotaged it, or maybe it appeared to just fall apart. And then really ask yourself, is it what you truly wanted? Was there any guilt surrounding that desire? Was there any judgment from you or others? Did you perhaps believe that you didn't deserve it? Then when it comes to acceptance, were you ready for it? It could be an interesting exercise in rewiring your brain to think within this process of manifestation. Do you know that old allegory about a man stuck on his roof during a flood? My dad would tell me this story all the time. So big flood, water's arising, and this guy is trapped on his roof. Gets down on his knees, he prays to God, God, please save me. 15 minutes later, a little dinghy chugs by. Quick, jump down. I'll save you. And the guy goes, no. I've prayed to God. He's going to save me. Don't worry about it. Gets on his knees again. Prays, please, God. I don't want to die. Save me from this flood. And then a speedboat whizzes by. Stops right in front of his house. Jump down. We'll get you out of here. No. God will save me. 
third time, gets on his knees, please, God, I'll do anything. Save me from this flood. And then a helicopter comes by, drops a ladder at his feet. And he says, no, God will save me. The moral of the story is God did try to save him. Three times, in fact. And he said no every single time because he was expecting an overt miracle. He was expecting the clouds to part, the waters to recede, a mighty hand to come down and pluck him from his rooftop, whatever. But that's not how it works. Remember, you're the power. I'm the power. We are the power. It doesn't come externally. It comes from within. So when the opportunity presents itself, when the boat comes to save you from the flood, get on the damn boat 